This is a photograph by Andreas Gursky. This is an auction of a photograph by Andreas Gursky. Andreas Gursky is the most influential photographer of our age. He has created a new aesthetic for our times. Flat, dull, seemingly nothing going on, but also epic, monumental, heroic, and very, very expensive. At 390,000 pounds, with you, madam, I'm selling to you at 390,000. Your 673, many thanks. That man has just sold the most expensive photo in the world. Gursky's vision is so total. His quest to catalogue the ordinary so unrelenting. I wanted to find out who the man behind these images might be. I wanted to find out whether Gursky is living in the ordinary world or we are living in a Gursky world. I'm a Gursky girl in a Gursky world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. I'm obsessed with Gursky, and I believe I'm living in a Gursky world. So I'm just going to take you up to the roof of my flat. It's a problem I have. I can't help seeing Gursky where ordinary life should be. Here we go. Look. Look. It's totally Gursky. This whole view looks like a Gursky photograph. This is why I feel like I live in a Gursky world. If you look out over this view, there's a sense of, you know, a sort of suburban inner city area, you're not quite sure which, tranquility and, and calm, and there's a kind of park down there that looks like it's been designed on a computer. I'm sure it has. When I look out over this view, I can see how regimented our lives are. And that's why I feel like I live in a Gursky world. I went to the opening of an Andreas Gursky exhibition in Paris to try to meet him. I'd brought a multicolored microphone with me in the hope that I would fit into the art world. Gursky's work was even better in real life than in books. His pictures filled whole walls. He uses a large format camera to show vast images of a world transformed by technology, global markets, dance culture and megacities. A world in which the individual is tiny and insignificant. I met the man who made Gursky a star in America. I think he's one of the best artists of his generation. Uh, I think he's made very original pictures that uh, are absolutely stunning to look at and very interesting to keep on looking at and keep thinking about. Damien Hirst, Andreas Gursky, who's better? Oh, I think Gursky is better. Gursky is 47. He studied under the Bechers, the Dusseldorf School of Post-War Photography. The Bechers believed in objectifying what they saw, approaching a subject as if they were scientists, not artists, and examining it through their lens. They loved classifying everything. Gursky seems to set out to subvert every fundamental in art photography. He goes for flat lighting, no depth, and he's always far, far away from his subject. Most of all, he seems to avoid the decisive moment, the tradition of photography epitomized by Cartier-Bresson that tried to capture something special from the everyday. <laughs> Gursky doesn't talk about his work very often, but everyone has their own theories about him. It's not about the, the people, it's not about the landscape, but it's, I think it's a little bit uh, the, the person inside of the landscape, you know? It's, it's the whole thing together that it really clicks. Do you think it's like existential? Or? Existential? Okay. Uh, not really, no. It's the combination of the monumentalism and yeah. the banality. Oui. Look. Yeah. Sure. No, la banalité non esiste tanto. E dice qualcosa della vita moderna? Beh, sì, guarda. Stratificazione, omogeneizzazione, 
I was having a great time practicing my European language skills, but as I looked round, I felt disappointed. Gursky had scoured the world, but where were the pictures of Britain? I felt so ashamed for my country. I want to persuade him to come to Britain to take photographs. Oh, okay. How Invite do, him to, how? Uh, to what do take I do? a photograph in England. Why not? How do I do that? Call him. It wouldn't be that easy. Gursky is busy with exhibitions all over the world. Since becoming an art superstar, he hangs out with supermodels, not people like me. He's the one on the left. Luckily, he had a personal assistant who I might be able to schmooze. No. Oh, you don't know who it is? Well, um, <laughs> I can't. I can't quite tell. Is, is this all oh, right? This is not. I'll ask. Andreas Gursky. I knew from experience that famous artists can be very sensitive. Maybe I only had a few seconds to make a good impression. Ich weiß, dass sie sehr viel zu tun haben und so weiter, aber wenn wir zum Beispiel 20 Minuten oder wenn sie 30 Minuten irgendwann in Düsseldorf hätten, könnten wir mal rüberkommen und so weiter. Also ich habe gerade mein neues Atelier bezogen. Ja. Von daher, ja, kommt gerne mal. Okay. I didn't yet know how I could persuade Andreas to come to Britain, but I was to receive my inspiration in one of London's smartest neighbourhoods. I was on my way to visit a collector. Hello. Hello, I've come to see your Gursky. This is it. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah, it's called May Day 2. And what I love about it is that the light that comes in, if you look at it carefully, it's like, a, it's like an arm. This is like the arm. And then this is like fingers reaching out, catching all these individuals, swaying to the music to something greater than themselves. And then almost as though whoever they're um, worshipping in the distance, it's as though the hand is coming to them. Wow. I feel like I live in a Gursky world. Is that just me or do you live there too? Everywhere you look, there's always a Gursky. Um, when my husband and I go past an airport, we always think, oh, that'll make a good Gursky. When I couldn't acquire a Gursky in 1996, I took a photograph of myself and created my own Gursky in a place called Sun City. It was a day when blacks and whites share this area together because normally it's segregated. It was just wonderful to see all these different people so happy doing things in action and uh, there's this like older man looking at this young uh, girl and they're all individuals within this mass of people. I now knew what my next step should be. If Anita could take a Gursky, then so could I. All I needed was a Gursky-like location in Britain where I could take some photos to show him.